All right, picture this. You come into the kitchen to find the floor just covered with water and bubbles, and your child is standing in the middle of it looking confused and sad. Turns out they put liquid dish soap in the dishwasher instead of detergent and somehow got it to run by pushing some random buttons. Now, you've got a huge mess to clean up and an upset child. Hey there, I'm Dr. Dave, and on today's Thrive in Five, I'm sharing some parenting tips about what you can do when your kids want to help out. All right, so let's look back at that scenario. In that moment, you're probably not super thrilled at your child's desire to help, right? It seemed to just make things harder for you rather than easier. But really, that desire to help is actually a good thing, and there are some things you can do to help meet that need for them while making things not quite so stressful for you. So here's a few tips. Look at helping from your child's point of view. They love helping you and trying the things that you do. Your mom or dad, right? You're their hero, and you can do so many amazing little things that they haven't learned yet. It's a great way for them to fulfill their needs for connection and satisfaction, so it just feels good to help you. Now, I know it can be frustrating to have your child involved in a task that you could do so much faster and possibly better if it were just you doing it. If you let them help with the dishes, you might end up with water all over the floor. If you let them help in the garden, they might accidentally pick flowers instead of weeds. If they try to feed the dog, they might spill the whole bag of dog food. It can be a mess. So let's be honest, it is easier to do things yourself and much faster as well, right? So when messes and delays happen, it can be really tempting to get mad at your kiddo. But remember, they are trying to make you happy and they don't mean to make mistakes. It just happens sometimes. And don't we all make mistakes sometimes, right? Our kids are new to these things and they're doing their best. They need your help learning these tasks they like helping with. And some of them will take years to learn. So patience is key. My second tip is to show your child how you want a task done. Don't just expect them to know. They can't read your mind and this is new for them. Give them jobs they can handle and then demonstrate and explain how to do them. For example, you can show them how you like the dishes stacked or how to make the bed and explain along the way how to do it right. You can also do this for tasks they're not quite capable of doing yet and they'll be better prepared when they are. Tip number three is to give your child gentle reminders of what to do, when to do it, and how. This doesn't need to be, and in fact it shouldn't be, a lecture. Things like name calling, you're so lazy, rhetorical questions like why can't you ever get this right? and blame or accusations are not helpful either. Instead, try giving them information. Okay, the lid needs to go back on or it'll spill. Describing what you see, I see that your bed is messy, or saying it again, one word, bed. Tip number four is to appreciate your child's efforts, even when they're not perfect. I remember when my nephew was really young, he and his dad were working on a tire for his bicycle. The young boy asked if he could help, and his dad asked him to go get a wrench. So his eyes got wide as he took off toward the house and then reappeared just moments later, running toward us, holding a bottle of ranch dressing and yelling, I've got the ranch, I've got the ranch. We had a good laugh and thanked him for his efforts in getting the wrench. So praising is important, and the way we praise them makes a difference. Rather than saying things like, you're such a good boy, try describing their efforts and their progress or the effect they have on others when they try to help. For example, you could say, that job was tricky. Man, but you kept trying. Or, you got the bread spread all the way on the bed this time. Way to go. And I bet they'd love to hear something like, you put all the dishes by the sink. That was really helpful. Of course, there will be times when you need to provide guidance to help them do things a little bit better, but sincere, Specific acknowledgement of the good things they're trying to do can help them believe they can learn to do things well and that their efforts matter to you, even if certain tasks are kind of tricky for them right now. Tip number five is to find a way for your child to help, even if it's just a small thing. Sometimes you might feel like they're just getting in the way, but maybe they can wash the vegetables for dinner while you take care of what's on the stove or hold a bowl to put the screws in when you're working on a project or they can hand you the clothes from the laundry basket for you to fold. And my last tip is to remember that your child learns the most from watching you. 
It'll be easier for them to learn how to be helpful if they grow up seeing you help other people. So let them see you working and serving and tell them about the helpful things you do for the family, for neighbors, for whoever, and tell them how it makes you feel inside to help others. It teaches them more than you might think. Your example is powerful. So those are my tips for today. First, remember that even if it makes things more complicated sometimes, your child loves to help you. Second, show them how you want a task done. Third, give them gentle reminders of what, when, and how to do things. Four, appreciate their efforts with sincere, specific praise. Five, find a way for your child to help. And the sixth tip, remember that your child learns the most from watching you. If you'd like more ideas about how to communicate in helpful ways with your kiddos, I highly recommend a book called How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen by Joanne Faber and Julia King. They have some really helpful principles and tools that can make a big difference for your interactions with your children. For more information, visit relationships.usu.edu.